We welcome Justin back. 81 tests for our country. I thought you'd already be in Melbourne, mate. What's up? Uh, no, uh, out of studio tomorrow night. Um, we've got another team that's doing the test match, Marty. So, uh, yeah, look, it's an exciting week, isn't it? Uh, the Bledisloe's now sort of got a stable hold in, in our trophy cabinet. And given the year the All Blacks have had uh, and what's been going on recently, uh, it is an interesting time. And to have it on a Thursday night as well, mate, like, that's next level. Next level. Well, you see, I'm hoping that, of course, you'll be in direct um, contact tomorrow to our, our good mate, Jeff, because the last time we had a midweek test, he became quite famous after a tackle by George Cregan <laughs> on it. So, something that you'll never forget. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll be in studio together in Auckland. Uh, so, um, far out, mate. Uh, look, I, I guess, <clears throat> when you think about magic moments in sport, that was one. And I know that whenever I've been involved in any panel discussions or anything that seems to crop up around that situation where George and, and Jeff are involved. Look, it's one of those ones that you kind of think about as a sporting piece of memorabilia that you, you, you're you happy to, to be involved in a discussion with. And, you know, like one of those, Marty, so here's a, here's a fact that you might not know about me and many of the listeners out there might not know either. Sure. I think I'm around about the third most... So my winning ratio for the All Blacks was about 82%, I think, which is not bad, over not 81 bad. tests. Yep. But I think I'm about the third lo most losing All Black no. against Australia ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what? Yeah, and, and, but, 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 but when anyone ever asks me about that, I always say, yeah, but you know what? That, that decade that I played and the Australian team that I played against, bloody hell, it was... It was a great Australian team, and we had good all-black teams, and we had monumental battles, many battles that went down to the micro minutes of games. You know, John Eos kicking that bloody goal against us in Wellington, yeah. uh, Toto Ketu scoring that try against us uh, in, in Sydney, Jonah scoring that try in that famous test match where we won. You know, they, they, they were awesome test matches, so I don't actually feel bad about that, and like that test match that... You know, you mentioned about Jeff and George. A hell of a game. Yeah. One hell of a yeah. game. Yeah. So not something to think about negatively. Think yeah. about, you know what, that's what people sit down at the stadium or in front of their TVs uh, is to watch rugby games like that. What a great refreshing attitude to have. Hard probably at the time because you're just so enveloped in the emotion of it. And I just remember... Um, with with Jeff, I mean, you know, then the next year, of course, is the World Cup final, and you see, I mean, so you know, you those you have those moments. Yeah. Do you before we even get to talk about this match tomorrow? Do you believe? Do you have as a player? Do you believe sometimes you got bad luck and you tagged with those, or is it after your finish career finishes, you can sit back and go, no, that's bad luck's bollocks, mate. It's just a happenstance, is all it is. Well, I think bad luck is a part of sport, and, and I think it doesn't matter whether it's rugby or it's any, um, you know, sporting identity or area that you want to make your way into it, it, sport is what it is and you're going to get your fair share of bad luck in, in that and that, they might be on the day situations, they might be personal where you've got injuries they could be anything uh, I think the fact that you're out there, you're competing and you're doing it for your country, for, for, your, for I guess basically trying to preserve or enhance your history you don't really think too much about it being bad luck. You just think about the fact that you're lucky to be in that environment, you're lucky to be in that situation, and you try to make it the, the most of every second, not every minute, but every second that you're out there. And or some way or whatever reason, every now and then, things that seem like bad luck, and you go, yeah, God, this guy or this team can't catch a break. You'd rather be there than not. Yeah. That, that was my attitude to it. Yeah, great attitude. Justin Marshall with his 81 tests for the All Blacks tomorrow in Melbourne. Marshy, are you happy with the selections? Before it happened, I wasn't on air yesterday, mate. I was a bit crook yesterday, so I didn't do it yesterday. But before it happened, I was thinking that, you know, Scott Barrett will go to six, Brody will come in. The only question really was who was going to be number eight. Was it going to be Satutu? Was it going to be Papali'i? Um, and in the end, he goes for Hoskins, who hasn't played an all-black match this year, but he's been playing for Counties Monaco. No other changes. So, first two questions. Are you happy with the selections, and did you expect that, Satutu? Look, you know, I've been very consistent in the fact that I feel that there are certain positions 
within that All Black starting 15 or starting 23, however you want to break it down. But I'm not entirely comfortably convinced that they are, you know, set in stone. And, and I think that we could possibly maybe put players in better positions or better uh, positions that are better suited at. Um, but given the fact that maybe we've got everybody available. So I'll leave it at that. Um, okay. I'm really, really pleased that we've picked an out-and-out number eight. So I, I don't think uh, switching Dalton Papali to the, to the side of the scrum, uh, to the back of the scrum was an option for the All Blacks. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that we have to find an answer to a blindside flanker uh, coming out of the second row. Yeah. Like, why can we not produce an out-and-out you know, number six, you know, a guy that plays that position, knows it well, balances out that back, back row trio. Um, I'm not saying that Scott Barrett can't play there. He did a great job the last time he was there, but, you know, like, this is just being me and being me individually. No. I, I'm still I'm still thinking to myself, are we really doing the right thing here? Um, you know how I feel about Will Jordan on the wing? Yeah. Uh, and the way Geordie Barrett's playing, um, he's playing like a 12. But, look, what, what I see them doing is they've brought in Hoskins as a number eight. Uh, they've basically kept the rest of the team, the, the, the team uh, apart from having to move Scott. But he's already been in the side anyway, Scott Barrett, that is. They're trying to get some selection consistency. So well, I don't really take umbrage of that because they're trying to develop I guess within that that group of players, a, a culture and a winning culture. So changing that around significantly wouldn't help that. Well, you'd be absolutely bitter and twisted, would you not, after putting 50 on against Argentina, that you didn't retain your place in the side. And, you know, there are two things with the All Blacks, is after losing a test, you think, OK, do the guys get given a second chance? Most of the time that happens, it's deserved. After you win a game, yep. I, remember, I remember talking to you a couple of weeks ago, don't you dare come for my jersey. I want this jersey. This is my jersey. You're not getting it back now that I'm winning. And I can understand that as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and look, 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 mate, put it this way. I, you know, I, I got the shits after, um, you know, the 2005 test against the British and Irish Lions. It's my second to last test against, uh, or for the All Blacks ever, and, and I, I got dropped. And we won, and we played well. And, uh, look, whether that was looking to the future, and they, and they brought Byron on, and I came off the bench. But I was like, well, what did we do wrong as a team? You know, like... And I was part of that side, and we won, and we won convincingly. But, you know, sometimes what, what's trying to be created is a part of, I guess, looking towards what's going to be successful and what is the future in the All Blacks. And that's again why I sort of raise my eyebrows is, so our future, what you're saying is Scott Barrett is a six, isn't it? No. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. So... Yeah, look, yeah, in answer to your question, look, um, absolutely, we we want to make sure that the players that go out and perform are the same players that we retain. But, mate, they, they lost for the first time in the history of our, um, you know, all, of the All Blacks against Argentina on our home soil, but we didn't make any changes, really. We, we made some tweaks in the, in the reserves, so they got a second chance anyway. So, yeah, I, I guess that sort of... Is that stuff you question up or? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know because I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, and 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 look, and the, you know, the, it, it's just there's there there's a million questions, and it's bloody hard to you know to get them all to answer them all. I just mm. you know I just I really I really don't know. I just I, I kind of wonder, you know, yeah. what, what is the, I'm trying to think long term, thinking okay, we're trying to create a squad for the World Cup, or are we interested now because of the desperation yeah. situation we're in, in winning test matches now. Look, you know, and I've quoted to you before, since Jerome Kano retired, we've tried 16 people in the number six jersey. I thought Shannon Frizzell was almost at the stage where he was owning that before his injury. But you're right. The depth in that position, you know, Akira Iwani's not a first choice in that position. Dalton Papali, he's not a first choice in that position. It's just so... We, we haven't really found... You know, since what? Two thousand. When did Jerome retire? Two thousand fifteen. Seventeen. We haven't really found yeah. somebody since then. I th I think they bring Scott Barrett in because he's an absolute line out weapon as well, and a, and a, and catch kickoffs, and so therefore you don't have to have your number eight doing that. But if that's the case, then you're excusing the number eight of some duty. So look, I mean, it, it raises as many questions as it creates answers, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right, but you are 
absolutely bang on about the line out. You know, the fact that uh, you know when, when you play Hardy, he's not a line out option. So you, you do have to compromise there. Um, so when you bring Scott into that loose forward trio. Sam Kane's an option. Um, he, he can be a legitimate jumper uh, and lift it, and equally so uh, Hoskins Satutu. So you gain an advantage there. What I'd like to think, Marty, is what we're doing is hopefully, which is another drum that I've been banging, and you know this through consistency, is what we're looking at is we're looking at not what's going to happen come September, August, September next year in France. We're looking more at what's going to happen this Thursday night and what's going to happen the following Saturday at Eden Park. We're looking at, more importantly, how we win test matches. Yep. Win them, win them, win them. Don't think about, OK, we're going to work our way through it because that's continually denting our history. Let's just think about what's right in front of us. And what I think they're thinking is right in front of us. With Australia in the last, like, is it 21 years in the Bledisloe Cup, yeah, they've got the odd test match. We've bullied them into submission. They do not like the physicality. South Africa in the first test tried to play a bit of rugby against them. How dumb was that? They're yeah. a physical side. No. Second test match with a little bit under their, under their nails of uh, Nick White and all the sort of rubbing of the hair sort of situation of, uh, you know, bloody hell. You, they just went out there and went, you know, stuff you. We're going to take you on physically. And they bullied Australia into submission. New Zealand have done that physically when they needed to in, in the last 20 odd years when we've been dominant in the Bledisloe like Cup. Scott Barrett will give us physicality at six. Hoskins will give us physicality at eight. Um, you know, Sam Crane, Sam Crane is a physical number seven. He's not a feature. So I think that's what they've said. You know what? We're going to win this test match and then we'll look at that position uh, and, and maybe you know, the end of year tour, because Eden Park, I think they'll go for the same recipe. Justin Marshall is with us, 81 test for the All Blacks. We're playing at Marvel Stadium. It is a sellout. I'm not sure that we should be jumping and celebrating too much about this. When the All Blacks can't sell out a test match in Australia for the Bledisloe Cup, I think that would be a worry, wouldn't it? I don't like this, yay, we're celebrating because we've sold out test matches. Shouldn't that be by right? Usually it is, but... Like everything, uh, there's more politics involved in sport than you know. Um, I yeah. think so. Uh, you know, I believe that Australian rugby did a deal with Melbourne or you know with with uh, the stadium, and uh, they will get future games there, or whatever. So basically, it was about you know how can we generate revenue and fit that facility into our next four or five years. So yeah, look. Uh, I don't know. It's unusual that there's a test match played on uh, a Thursday night or even a, a, a weekday night. But the fact that it's a sellout is a good thing because, you know, I was over there for the Super Rugby um, Super Round and it was far from that. And it was a bit disappointing, to be fair. But that was also politically sort of there was lots of equations involved in that. So, look, the game like everything has in the last two to three years is hemorrhaging and unions um, need to make decisions based around the future and I think that's why we've been landed with this but you know what mate, mate uh, I'm looking forward to sitting down Same. on a Thursday night Same. and uh, we've got a hell of a week of sport haven't we ahead of us with rugby league finals going on and thing happening in the game um, to maybe sit down with a cold beer and um, watch the test yep. match that is, is, is an anomaly in the mix. Yeah, it's great for us. It's only a broadcast. It's a hell of a thing yeah, to be able to talk yeah. about for a start. <laughs> Just watching some of that NRL on the weekend. Good God, that Sinbin Sunday game. Did you watch oh it? God. Oh, hello. Mate, mate. mate, I watched that. What? Holy moly. That, that <laughs> was next level, that was. was and, it? You know, you, you kind of think about the physicality in rugby, but... Whoa. Far out. To get six guys in the bin and four guys HIA ruled out... Uh, yeah, that, 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 well, basically made me think there's two teams that don't like each other. That yeah, much that's it. Perfectly honest. You can tell, though. You can absolutely yeah. tell. And the other thing is, cold. mate, is that cold. these men, are just huge men, they're, they're, they're reckless abandoned with their own bodies and health that they're just smashing into yeah. each other. Yeah. I mean, mate, I'm just sitting there. You can feel some of it. You can hear it. You can feel it. And wow. the, the HIAs, mate, I mean, they've obviously got a different set of rules to rugby in the rest of the world, but, I mean, these yeah. HIAs... You know, it just, it, just seems, it just seems to be par for the course for rugby league at the moment. Yeah, it does. But you know what I liked about it, you know, Devs? What I liked about it was 
there's an air of finality about it. You know, there was there, there was this sense of desperation yeah. that if you don't go out there and give everything you've got and put your body into those situations, there's no next week. That's it. And that's what a that's what a rugby world cup. That's what a Bledisloe. That's what a rugby world cup is all about. You know, and and I, I don't want to be negative here, but that's also what a losing a test to Ireland for the first time in your history. Should be about uh, losing a first test to Ireland for the first time in your own soil, losing to Argentina for the first time in your own soil. That's the sort of desperation that you need as a sportsman, as you, that you need as commitment. You know, if you see guys out there and they literally have nothing left on the bench because everybody else has gone out there and either knocked themselves out or gone absolutely stupid with physicality, you go, you know what? If you have lost, we can see that you tried with your heart everything that you possibly could to win that game. And yeah. we can see that. And, and, yeah. and the evidence of that was very clear in that game on Sunday. Holy mackerel, yeah, they right. went at each other. Yeah. And that's actually, yeah. I mean, that's bloody, that's absolutely 125% true, isn't it? I mean, that's and almost, to the, yeah. almost to the stage of, as I said, of just reckless care. The other thing is, as I was going to ask you about, and it's not anything to do with us, and this is why I was wanting to ask you about it, but, you know, Janchi's in the dietitian in South Africa, and one of them, they both get sent home in the end. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed at, you know, we all love a saucy sex scandal these days, don't we, eh? And, and, you know, but is it anyone else's business apart from theirs when it comes down to it? Do you send players home? If that was the captain, would they be sending him home? Look, I'm not across it enough to comment, and I'm not certainly sitting on the fence, but um, I've had, uh, oh, well, I've been away, actually, for most of the week, so okay. uh, That's right. I did see some, I, did, I saw some media come out about it, and that there was some sort of a scandal. Uh, yeah, look, I, I guess when you're talking about a team environment, and, and then you're talking about uh, things that may affect the team, um, look, to, to be perfectly honest, I couldn't comment on it, because I simply don't know enough of the detail. All I saw was a couple of the headlines, but um, yeah, I've been uh, well. Sky have been very good to me because they've got me to do some analysis for the for the game tomorrow night. So I've been tied up in all that and not really looked uh, into. You know, and the other thing I didn't look into was why, like what, because obviously it's South Africa uh, versus Argentina and Argentina. Yeah. Like obviously those Argentinians went home as heroes. Yeah. For what they did in New Zealand, I didn't even see. Really, I wasn't across a lot of the press of how they did. They have parades or a big reception at the airport. Was it was it as significant for them as how it felt for us? Like, uh, you might be able to. No, uh, I don't. I don't, me, I don't, I don't I, think. I don't, I don't think. You know, because they, their football is their major sport. It's not winning a world championship. It's certainly a significant historic achievement. But uh, I think that you know there's a temperance mm. to it be, because of that. Another big weekend of rugby, mate. I can't wait. And tomorrow night, what's your call then? We win this. I mean, I always think we're going to win, but I got a feeling that we're actually, we have to go out and do it again, like we did against Argentina in the second test, don't we? We've, this is where you talk about the consistency. We got to play to that level again. Yeah, we do, and and, and I think that's what the All Black selectors and then Foster is after with his basically near on consistency with his selection. But secondly, I, I do know that. In our, in our DNA, you're talking to some of the current players, who some of them are working for Sky now, it's very much in our mentality that we know we can bully and out-physical Australia. As long as they don't go out there and stick by that mantra, given the side that I see that they've named, I think that, yes, we can go there and we can win and we can win reasonably comfortably. You know, when I say reasonably comfortably, I'm talking eight to ten points where it's not going down to you know, the micro minutes of the game and we're sort of all sitting on the edge of our couch thinking, by oh God, I'm not going to go fill that glass up right now because uh, mm. something's a bit dramatic going to happen. Talk again on Monday. Thanks as always, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, hope you're after a good all-backs one, Devs. Cheers, mate.